Rep of the Ninth Circuit of the Rep Test of the Clark County Chamber of Commerce Candidate Forum. I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. This evening's event is sponsored by the Winchester Clark County Chamber of Commerce, the Winchester Sun, and WWKY Radio. My name is Bruce Manley, and I will be your moderator this evening. Last week, I told you that they couldn't get the brains, so they went for the looks. <laughs> what I didn't tell you was down between two people, me and Mason Guy. <laughs> you see where I'm at? Yeah. <laughs> I want to tell you tonight that the note cards, if you want to submit a question, the note cards are sit sitting in about every other seat. So those are for you. If you want to ask a question tonight, write down a question on the card and then take that over to Cindy Banks, Mary T, uh, and it looks like our uh, timekeepers, uh, Tammy's going to be up here timekeeping tonight. So tonight's forum is uh, live on WWKY radio and also broadcasting live on the Winchester Clark County Chamber of Commerce Facebook page. Um, thank you to um, our WWKY sponsors, Tim Smith, Hayes McMakin. You know, Tim lost his radio one time. All he could play was the sound of silence. <laughs> you know how this evening's going to go, right? Okay. So, especially a uh, special thanks to all of our volunteers tonight um, and the Commerce Advocacy Team with the Chamber of Commerce. This forum would not be possible without all the help from that committee and especially Nick Comer. Let's have a round of applause for Nick and Comer. We're not done yet. We're just halfway through. Join us again next week on Wednesday, the May 4th where we will hear from the candidates from the Kentucky 6th District Congress and U.S. Senator race. But tonight, we are here, we've got a full agenda tonight. We're going to hear from the Winchester City Commission, the Kentucky 73rd Legislative District Representative, our County Clerk, District 2 Constable, and District 3 Constable. <laughs> Alright, just a second. Oh, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do I'm going to do I'm the second one. I don't know. 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 I do <laughs> All right. Here we have candidates for state representative in the 73rd district. Remember our rules tonight. We have a two-minute opening statement. You'll see the red folder when you have 30 seconds left and hear the bell when time is up. Then we'll have about two to four questions, but we have one minute apiece to answer. So we're going to start with Mr. Adams, your two-minute opening statement. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Thanks to the Chamber for putting this together. Thanks to Bruce. Thanks to Tim. Hi to my family. Hi to Christina. You guys, it's really happening. It's really happening. I'm Tommy Adams, and I'm running for state representative because I believe I can change the world, and I believe that we can if we work together. Got a lot of great ideas that I want to share with you tonight. And I believe the big ideas, great communication, good intentions, strong relationships, a willingness to never stop learning, and most importantly, caring about each other 
with those things, you can do so much good. I'm a long-time teacher, I'm a lifelong learner, I'm a dedicated member of an amazing, all-volunteer search and rescue team. I'm an active member of my community, I even founded a run club right here in Winchester. I'm going to keep working for my community, whether I win or lose. I'll seek out big ideas and bring them to the table. I'll be unafraid of complexity when it comes to pushing our legislature to open its collective mind to progress. I'm going to be the guy in the room that's not afraid to look foolish because I don't know what I'm talking about, because I just want to help people. I won't be afraid. Anyway, I want you guys to know that I teach public speaking. I teach public speaking and communication. And I'm here right now, and I am just bubbling with energy. And this energy that I am bringing here tonight is the same energy that I'm going to bring if I'm elected to office. And I'm going to bring it every day to work for you. Now, over the next few weeks, before the primary, I'm going to work to learn the priorities of the people in my district. And over the next few months before the general, I'm going to get to work down in the pavement. But I didn't come here tonight to do anything other than say hello. So hot. <laughs> if we haven't had a chance to meet in person, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adams. All right. Mr. Hillian. I'd like to thank the chamber. Uh, Ms. Tammy Wilberley. And uh, the former holes of the river. Ah, uh, the always buoyant Miss Cindy. Uh, many a good day there. Uh, and a moderator, uh, Bruce, is doing a fine job. Good jokes. Okay. I'm glad somebody likes us. Uh, we, our family, started living here out of a tent. Uh, thanks to the kindness of all you folks, we were able to make go of here. Okay? You are great folks. Uh, the best I've known. I used to live in Waukesha, Wisconsin. And this place reminds me of Waukesha, Wisconsin. It's Waukesha nice. You are all so nice. You are good folk. Uh, folks, we have a need, as a nation, we face an ever worsening weather now is a fire, flood, and tree uh, from climate change. Nature don't care. Uh, See, Kentucky needs my problems are the skills. Problems are easier if you keep things simple. The KISS method. We don't have all day. We don't have all night. We need to be focused and quick. The delay will be deadlier and costlier. Prepare. My goals are very simple. Okay? Prepare and repair our infrastructure, especially our water mitigation systems. I plan on working towards building two hydroelectric dams in eastern Kentucky. Uh, if you build it, they will come. If we have low-cost energy and it goes to this area, there will be plenty of jobs. There will be people coming to this area. Uh, I believe in stable stability. Communities are count Economy and our energy, uh, balance our environment, our government. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll give you leeway if you need to. Just for housekeeping rules, I want to tell them that our Facebook camera is cutting off the heads if you stand up. So. Uh oh, I did lost. <laughs> I just I just got that word, so I didn't know that. I apologize. I'll shoot that. We should have done that. Full frame right here. <laughs> All right. Our next question, we're going to start with Mr. Houlihan. Okay. Um, our first question of the night, and this one comes from our audience. It seems that in these days of decisive politics, people have forgotten that our state motto is united we stand and divided we fall. What is your vision for bringing Kentuckians back together and to unite our table of the Commonwealth that was founded. Well, we need to be more modern in both temperament and in numbers. Understand, the Bible tells us not to be moderate in all things. The Bible taught in Paul, dying words, to be known by our moderation. It is the modern who is truly the righteous person who listens to people who listens to both sides, who 
listens to both the common and the expert, and who is willing to, to listen and do what other people want to do. They are willing to compromise. They're willing to work together. And I am moderate in temperament. I am willing to listen. I learn, I literally listen to people all day long. I solve their home improvement problems, and I am an excellent, excellent problem solver. And I intend to do that in Franklin. Thank you. Mr. Adams? This divisive climate was mentioned in the question isn't going away anytime soon, and part of it is deserved. Part of it is due to the fact that the people that are currently in office are actively hurting Kentuckians. And so we're going to have to fight back against that. That part's real. But there's something else that we need to talk about. And that's that folks like Rory and I know how to work with people. The activities that I'm engaged in, my career, it's pretty hard to get bogged down in silly political divisiveness when you're running with people, when you're carrying the body out of the gorge. Bigger things are on the table here, and we're going to need to learn how to work together. If you look at my conflict style, which is one of the things that I teach in class, the thing that I score the highest on is collaboration. It doesn't mean that I don't like to win. It just means that when I win, I don't want to be doing it alone. Thank you. All right, Mr. Adams, the next question goes to you again. I'm going to pull this question out of hand again. What can you do to change the narrative that Winchester is the city of no when it comes to economic growth? I want you to look at the political science for the person who's currently in office, the position that I want. The only conservative Republican. Don't brand Winchester like that. Brand Winchester is a place that can be for everyone. I think it's quite simple. My campaign slogan, Kentucky for every Kentuckian. Winchester can be a place for every Kentuckian. And we need to build a place that can welcome every Kentuckian to our state. And so policies that we put in place at the state level, at the local level, need to be policies that can welcome people from all backgrounds. Heard words like participation tonight. All that stuff is going to be important. We're going to need inclusive policies and people who are willing and able to have those conversations to advocate for those policies at all levels of government. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Billy. Understand, everything starts with people. Okay, we have a great bunch of people out here. We are good people. So, why are we the city of no? Because we have leadership that says no, because they're worried about saving money instead of making the investments that is needed to make us an excellent place. We have all the moving parts literally ready to go. All we have to do is combine them and get them to work together. Look, I sit, I'm in a place that everybody knows where I am, where you can get a hold of me, where you can talk to me, where you where you can ask me questions. I am literally open to you on a daily basis. If you have a question, I can answer. If you have a need, I can take care of it. I'm there for you. I want to do you good. Okay. All right, Mr. Finlay, <laughs> you get the next question. Uh, All right. In Frankfurt, everyone is fighting for their communities. What would you do to fight for our community in Frankfurt? I would probably work with the communities around us. Understand, legislature is a team effort. Okay, I would probably work with folks in Eastern Kentucky. They have a lot to share with us as far as needs. I have, we, I can work with urban county personnel. I can work in the South. Understand, we are not how many U.S. Senators are from this side of Kentucky? Let's put it this way, from I-75, over. None. Why is that? Because we're not thinking as a group, and we're not getting representative as a group for that, because we're not working together. 
We have a lot of needs. We have a lot in common. If we work together, we will get the votes that will get things done. Understand, legislation is a team. Thank you, Mr. Adams. One of the things that I'm going to be able to do for this community is by providing good leadership at the state level and a voice for the things that matter to you. Like Lori said, I'm going to be accessible, and so I'm going to be able to speak to your issues. But let's talk about the things that I'm good at. I'm a teacher, longtime educator, and so I'm going to advocate for our schools, our local schools. We've got some good stuff going on here, and we can be better at it. Homelessness, big problem here. And I'm not just here to talk about it. I want to end it. Addiction, we need to address it. We need to advocate for the solutions that are already being pushed by great groups here in our community. Low-income folks need all the help they can get. Affordable housing, come on, we can do a lot better. I have so many things that I want to talk about, and if you gave me more time, I'd keep going. But I want you to know that it all starts with having a good voice for the policies of our community and for the things that we need right here. And I can be that person because I can build a broad coalition of support for the people of Winchester. All right, thank you. All right, we have another question from the audience, and this one starts with Mr. Adams again. And I love it, we're getting a lot of education questions. Do uh, you agree with the changes made in the General Assembly? No. <laughs> I didn't even finish the question. <laughs> and how would you prioritize education? Public schools should be cathedrals. It's the silver bullet. They're the solution if we put our money into it and our time and our effort and, and our energy. They deserve way more respect than they've been getting by our, our state legislature. Taking money out of schools is only going to worsen the problems that already exist. I won't stand for it. Now, at the same time, I'm not a parent, but I can tell you that we want parents to have as many rights as they can possibly have in the decisions of their children. But that's not what this is about. The decision should be clear for them. It should be public schools. And so we need to prioritize them across the board. And you're going to have an advocate for public education, a person who has been connected with schools for as long as I can remember, and I have never been a part of them. I'm one of those people that will fight for them. My teachers were my favorite people in the world. When I leave here tonight, there's a person that I would want to talk to, and her name is Miss Warners. She's my first grade teacher. That's how important education is to me. She's no longer with us, but she's the one that I would want to tell. All right, thank you. Mr. Fulham. I've been to every school in the county, literally speaking. I do the kids' programs for years, how they love us. So I know personally how important our schools are because I've been there, I've done programs for our schools, for literally from 2001 on, okay? Our schools are the first beginnings of everyone, okay? And I was also the treasurer for ECDC for a while, and we built a playground unit. We need to have, from third years on, a education system. We need a three semester year so that folks who are working can have the ability to work all year long and have the ability for our kids not to lose their learning during the summertime. All right, thank you. Let's have a round of applause for our candidates. I didn't say that was the last one. You didn't say that was the last question. That was, that was four questions, wasn't it? You didn't say it was the last one. Oh, did I say it? <laughs> <laughs> you were hoping for one more, I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there will be other opportunities. <laughs> How about a good idea of fund education? There you go. There it is. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Next, I would like to invite on the stage the candidates. Do we stay for No. Oh, we get out of here. I'll, did I, did no, I not no, let no, you no. answer? Oh, it's not your fault. I just want to talk. Here is. Here. Can you answer? <laughs> okay. I want to make sure that Bruce. Yeah. Okay. 
That's all okay. I'm saying. I want to make sure I get the message. No, 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 no. No, thank you, Father. Oh, okay, good. All right, because we want to be fair to everybody. Oh, yeah, proper time. I just really warmed up. That's fine. Thank you very much. You guys were only two of them. You just had a long time. 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 You never know about me. You know about me. Oh, appreciate it. Uh, some, sometimes I'm not used to feeling wrong at work. I feel wrong mostly at home. <laughs> hey, I read a book the other day about how to build a staircase. It was a step-by-step guide. 